Happy Saturday. For episode five, we are going to be making a puff pastry Philly cheesesteak, and it is going to be amazing. We are going to pair that dinner with this Cabernet Franc from Napa Valley. It's going to be D to the Lish. Hey guys, so for the wine tasting tonight, I wanted to go with a wine that I thought would pair really well with this Philly cheesesteak style dinner. So with the Philly cheesesteak, we've got peppers and onions in it. And I just thought that this Cabernet Franc would pair so well with the beef and the peppers and the onions in our, in our um, puff pastry that we're going to be doing tonight. So Cabernet Franc is a little bit different than Cabernet Sauvignon where Cabernet Franc gives a really nice finish of like spicy. Sometimes it's even like green pepper, jalapeno, like pepper based. I just really like a Cabernet Franc because it's very unique and it pairs so well with so many different things. This one is going to give us notes of um, raspberry and black cherry and some rose petal and some cocoa on the palate and a little spice on the finish. So what I, I like about this wine too, it's Napa Valley. So it's going to be big and bold from all of that heat and it's 10 years old. This wine is a decade old. So you can already see like a garnet hue on this wine because of the age. So we should really get a lot of character in this wine. I think it's going to be amazing with our dinner tonight. Cheers. Okay, I love the nose already. Mm. You know what's nice about a 10-year-old wine? What's that, babe? I myself have the maturity of a 12-year-old, so we <laughs> pair perfectly. <laughs> I actually really love this wine. What do you think? I didn't like it when I smelled it, but now I like it after I drank it. Okay, well, I loved it on the nose. I love it on the palate. It is super fun. Very, very bold. Lots of chewy tannins. I would say chewy tannins, like a hot tea. That's kind of like what red wine kind of does too. So chewy tannins on this, but wow, I would probably decant this and let it sit for like 45 minutes to an hour and really just open up and settle. And I'm telling you guys, this is a great wine and a really good price point. I think I paid like $35 for this bottle. So super good price point for what we're drinking tonight. It's gonna go great with our dinner. Let's get to cooking. <laughs> hey guys, all right. So I love Philly cheesesteak. Anything that, that uh, is Philly cheesesteak related, I am down. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is such an amazing, amazing dinner. All right, a couple tablespoons of olive oil in the pan. I'm gonna do a couple tablespoons of butter also. I've already sliced up one Vidalia sweet onion and one green pepper. When all this gets melted in nice, I'm gonna dump these in and I'm gonna give them a little salt. And I'm just gonna let them hang out in this skillet and caramelize nice. And then we're gonna throw our shaved steak in. We're gonna cook that up. I've got my oven preheating to 400. So once we get our steak all combined and everything, then we're going to make our puff pastry, which I've already thawed out. Pepperidge Farm puff pastry sheet, and we are just going to put it all together. All right, we have our oil and our butter nice and melty here in the pan. We're just gonna dump in our onions and peppers. Ooh, it already smells good. Barely done anything. Pop a little salt on these guys. Okay, so while our onions and peppers are cooking down, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my block. We're going to put in some shredded cheddar cheese, some Velveeta, and a kick of cayenne. Uh, to make a nice Philly cheese sauce to go over top of our braided Philly cheesesteaks. So what I like to do when I grate cheese, I like to get a nice size bowl and I just put my box grater right in it. That way, when you're grating your cheese, you're grating it right into the bowl. Block cheese melts so much better than pre-shredded bag cheese does because it doesn't have any of those additives. So you get a nice melt on your cheese when you grate it yourself. Hey guys, I got some great char on my 
peppers and onions here. I'm just going to kind of push them to the side in the pan. And then I'm going to take my shaved steak and just kind of break it up and place it in the pan. And this is just under a pound of steak. Kiss it with some salt and some fresh cracked pepper. And we will go ahead and start just picking it apart. Once it kind of cooks through enough, I'll go ahead and kind of combine it with my peppers and onions. Now, while this is frying, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to be real with you. My recipe will call to add provolone cheese into this mixture before you add it to your puff pastry sheet and create your braid and pop it in the oven, right? Because I am who I am. I forgot to pick up provolone cheese. So lucky for me, I have some extra pepper jack cheese slices in the fridge. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the pepper jack slices in here. And it'll be D to the wish and it'll be great. So honestly, you can use whatever kind of cheese you like melted into this. Make it your own. Obviously tonight, that's exactly what I'm doing. I just pulled out what I had available. Thank God I had something available. And we'll use that up. And I got to tell you guys, this wine, it just keeps getting better with every sip. I think I'm going to go back to Total Wine and buy myself a couple more bottles of this because I really am enjoying this wine. Okay, guys, my meat is done enough. I'm going to go ahead and just push it all in with the peppers and onions and get everything married together here. I'm just going to take my pepper jack cheese here. I'm, I'm using every single one of these slices. I'm just kind of slapping them on. It's only five. That's fine. Pop my lid on here. Once this melts in, I'll stir it all up. And then you're going to meet me back over at the island to watch me put together this puff pastry braided ensemble. We'll pop that bad boy in the oven and bake it for a little bit. And then we are going to make our cheese sauce while it's baking. We're going to dive in. Stay tuned. Okay, guys. So we've got our puff pastry ready to go. What we have to do now is take the sides and we have to just slice little lines in it. This is going to be for our braid. So now that I have my little fellas cut out, I'm going to take my cheesesteak mixture and I'm going to place it right in the center. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, this looks amazing. And then I'm going to take my, my guys here and I'm just going to kind of twist them and bring them up to meet each other at the top. Okay. So you'll just pick them up twist a couple times meet at the top pick up twist meet at the top all right guys i just melted like a tablespoon or so of butter and i'm just going to take my little brush here and just brush the puff pastry with this butter butter doesn't have to be perfect just a quick brush now we're going to throw this in the oven at 400 degrees for like oh, 20, 25 minutes, when, just, just enough so it browns nice and puffs up nice. And then while this is in the oven browning, I'm going to take my cheddar cheese and my Velveeta cubes that I cubed up, and I'm going to throw that in my little sauce pot and just melt it slowly, make a nice sauce with it. And we're going to use that sauce to just drizzle over the top of this amazing puff pastry braided cheesesteak. We're going to get all that done and we'll meet you back here at the island for some tasting. I can't wait to dive in. Look at how beautiful this braided puff pastry Philly cheesesteak turned out. I am so excited to dive in. And look who we have uh, joining us for the tasting tonight. The first time I brought Mr. Pickle Pants over to say hi. Babe, I got a fork for you and a big old bite right there with some cheese on it. Why don't you dive in and tell us what you think? I'm just, Mammoth I'm just going bite. for it. Go for it, babe. I'm going to do a maybe a little bit of a smaller bite here with some of this puff pastry and yeah, all the onion and the meat and oh my gosh. I put a little Maldon sea salt on the top too to kind of, you know. Mm. So here's the thing. I love a Philly cheesesteak. In fact, people have often commented that uh, this is body by Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> but I will say this. This is all the fun, all the flavor of a Philly cheesesteak 
without the mess and it's all over your hands and it's whatever. It's four yeah. fulls. You got extra cheese. It's a little spicy because she used pepper jack instead of provolone, which I think is actually the way to go. Mm -hmm. It's outstanding. It's filling. It's comfort food. It's just complicated enough to impress your friends. Oh, this is a perfect thing to make for game night. Have your friends over. Throw this in the oven. It is easy. It is perfect. And I'm telling you, everyone will go back for seconds. It is a D to the Lish dinner. <sighs> Another episode of Saturday Dinners. It's a wrap. Cheers, everyone. Is this episode five? Yeah. Holy crap. Flying by. Whew. Nope, I'm going to back up because I want to say Deeds of Delicious at the end, and that's too many Deeds of Delicious. Beep, beep, beep. All right, we're going to start over. All right, let's get to tasting. Hi. Hi. We got some fun today. Okay. You look nice, though. Thank you. How's, my, how's my hair? It's perfect. <laughs> God. I'm giving you all kinds of outtakes tonight. <laughs> I tried to roll it out, but my, my handles are keeping it up. <laughs> Mom with little green bean. Thank you, my little green bean. Thank you, Mom with little green bean. Oh, this is good.